In this video, we will be showing how to install heating elements into an LNL Special Furnace model GS1714 benchtop furnace. We will start by showing what a side element and bottom element look like when they are properly installed. Starting first with the bottom element, you want to grab the inside of the element coil with a pair of needle nose pliers. You want to twist the coil outward approximately one quarter of a turn. This will increase the distance between the center of the element coils. You want to repeat this step for both sides of the heating element. We want to hold the element up to the heating element holders to make sure the coils are spaced apart enough to fit into the holders. You may have to twist the center distance out further. With the center distance verified, now grab the tail of the element with the needle nose pliers. We want to bend the tail toward the inside of the element. This is done to reduce the chance that the edge of the tail will get snagged when installing the heating element. With the element modified to fit, insert the heating element into the element holders until the element is just about to hit the front brick of the furnace. Again, using needle nose pliers, lift the element up over the front brick so that the element center slides into the groove. Finally, with the needle nose pliers, bend down the center of the element so that it stays underneath the surface of the brick. This is done so that the element stays inside the brick when it expands while heating. The side element installation is the same as the bottom, except the center spacing should already be correct. The first step is to verify the center spacing against the heating element holders. The same as we did with the bottom element, we need to adjust the element tail before inserting it into the element holders. And again, once the element is modified, insert it into the element holders and slide it all the way through until the center of the element is about to hit the front brick. Using your needle nose pliers, lift the end of the element up to get it to slide over the brick groove. If the brick chips a little bit, it's not a problem. Finally, adjust the position of the element so that it stays inside the groove when it's being heated. Moving now to the back of the furnace where we have a few elements already installed. The element towels should be sticking straight out from the back of the furnace with the ceramic insulator already installed. Our first step is to install a ceramic bushing. This is used to prevent the element from contacting any metal surface. Our next step is to tie the element ends to the threaded bolt. You should consult your electrical schematic to verify which element ends get tied off to which bolt. All of the hardware being used is 304 stainless steel. First, we want to install a number 10 flat washer onto the exposed thread. 
Now you want to support the ceramic spacer, pull the element tight, and wrap it clockwise around the threaded bolt. There should be enough tension in the element tail to hold it in place. Some of the threaded bolts will have two element tails tied off to them. Just tie one off and then tie the next one directly on top of it. With the elements looped around the bolt, we want to insert another stainless steel flat washer. And then we will install a number 10 stainless steel hex nut. The hex nut can just be loose at this point. Skipping ahead, we should now have all of the heating elements tied off. The next step is going to be to tighten down the stainless steel hex nut that is holding the element tails onto the threaded bolt. We want to use a 5 16 wrench to hold the head of the bolt that is underneath the terminal board and then a 5 16 nut driver to tighten down the hex nut. You want to tighten the hex nut down to about a half turn past hand tight. We don't want to use any power tools for this as they will mess up the threads. Once the hex nut is tightened, the last step is to use a pair of diagonal cutters to snip off the excess element ends. I want to make sure you're wearing safety glasses for this as the element wire will spring off in any direction. Just showing the tightening procedure again, 5 16 wrench on the hex nut head behind the terminal board, 5 16 nut driver to tighten down the hex nut. You want to go about a half turn past hand tight. And then diagonal cutters to snip off the element tail. Skipping ahead again, we have all of our elements tied off and three of the four corner jumpers are in place. The jumper is used to give power to the elements around the corner. It is installed on top of the element hex nut and held in place with another number 10 hex nut. These hex nuts are again held in place using a 516 nut driver, but you should not need the wrench to hold the element bolt in place. It should be tight from the element tails. Now the first step to checking that the elements are installed correctly is to check for resistance across the element loop. With a resistance meter, we want to check resistance on the studs shown. This will give us resistance through the full loop and we should be looking for about 10 ohms of resistance. The next step is to check resistance to ground to make sure no element is touching the metal case. We want to go from the element terminal to the mounting bolt for one of the terminal boards, and these should be an open loop. The final step here is to install the element power wires on the terminals that are shown. And these again are held in place with number 10 hex nuts.
The final step to the heating element install is to verify the power draw through the heating element circuit. This does require that the furnace be powered up with full voltage, so make sure to wear any required PPE. The first step is to put your controller into manual mode at 100% output. This will vary depending on which controller you have, so consult your operator's manual for the correct procedure. You want to make sure the furnace door is closed and the limit switch is actuated, but the back panel limit switch should not be actuated. I'm going to put a clamp meter onto either one of the element power lines, manually actuate the rack limit switch. We should see about 23 amps of power on a 240 volt system. Power will only flow when both limit switches are active. That completes the procedure on installing elements on an LNL Special Furnace Model GS 1714. For more information, please consult our website at www.llfurnace.com or you can reach out to our service department directly at service at llfurnace.com. Thank you.